Welcome to project number 9, Easy FPJ Finite Fade Machine. At the end of this project, you are going to be able to create the same pattern that you see in the FPJ State Machine GIF. Let's have a quick project overview. In part 1 of this project, we are going to design in Verilog the following modules. A custom 7-segment decoder and the Easy FPJ Finite State Machine. Next, we are going to create a Verilog test bench and simulate it using a model sim project. In part 2 of this project, we are going to create a Quartus project, synthesize the top module, connect the design to the FPGA pins, use the RTL viewer and the state machine viewer, and in the end program the DE1 SOC development board to see how our Verilog design works. The state machine diagram from the left creates the pattern that you see in the Easy FPGA GIF. Also, here you can see the final circuit that is synthesized from our Verilog code. If you're a complete beginner, I recommend you doing some of these easier projects first. You can try the binary adder to 7 segment display, the push button counter with the bounce, the linear feedback shift register, or the digital BCD timer. You can find links in the video description. Let's do a brief introduction into finite state machines. A finite state machine is a mathematical model that can process a sequence of inputs in time and have an exact output based on them. A state machine has exactly one state at a moment in time. When the state changes, this is called a transition. Always the state of an FSM changes according to its inputs. State machines can be implemented in software or in hardware. The hardware implementation is a sequential circuit having a finite number of states occurring in a predefined order. State machines are all around us. We can find them in vending machines, elevators, traffic lights, turnstiles. The most common types of finite state machines are Mealy and more. You can find out more about them by using the resources from the video description. Let's analyze now the state transitions diagram for our FPGA project. Initially, the state machine is in the off state, where all the 7 segment displays are turned off. After reset n is deasserted and the internal counter counts 0 5 seconds, then we go into the easy state. In the easy state, all the 7 segments are on and they display the pattern easy. After we count 2 seconds, the state machine goes into the FPGA state, where all the 7 segment displays are on and they have the FPGA pattern on them. After we count another 2 seconds, we go into the easy shift state. In this state, we are going to display first the pattern E, then the pattern EA, then the pattern EAS, and in the end the pattern easy. Each pattern lasts for 0 5 seconds. Displaying the patterns in this order is going to create a shift left effect. After we finish the easy shift state, we go into the FPGA shift state. Here, we display the pattern F, FP, FPG, and in the end FPGA. After all these patterns are displayed for 0 5 seconds, we are going back into the off state. And there, the state machine starts cycling again in the same manner. Remember that you can customize this project and adapt it to your own needs. Let's analyze now the top level port description for the easy FPGA module. We are going to use a parameter called clock freeq that has a default value of 50 MHz because this is the clock that I have on the DE1 SOC development board. Next, our module is going to have a clock port, which is a 1-bit input for the clock signal, a reset end port for the asynchronous reset, a 3-bit port called OState that is going to be displayed here on the LEDs, and it represents the current value of the state. Next, we are going to have O hex 0, 1, 2, and 3, that are four 7-bit outputs connected to the 7-segment displays. And now it's action time! Please create the following Verilog files. Note that the full project can be downloaded from ovisign.com courses. You need an easyfpga.v file, the hex 7-segment decoder custom, and the tb easyfpga. Let's analyze now the content of each of these files. We first start with the 7 segment custom decoder. I took the initial version of the Verilog code from the 7 segment decoder used in all the other projects present in this playlist. Remember that it can be used 
in either common anode or in common cathode mode, depending on your FPGA connection. Here we have the internal logic for the 7 bits that control the 7 segment displays. And then we use an always at star to create the combinational circuit. I commented all the other values that are not used in this project. Let's see now how I hacked the initial 7 segment decoder and used it to display the easy FPGA pattern. When in equals 0, the 7 segment display will be in the off state. The initial representation for the for value is similar with the y, so I reused it for this purpose. Next, the s looks in the same way as a 5, the g looks in the same way as a 6, a is the hexadecimal value for 10, e is the hexadecimal value for 14, and f is the hexadecimal value for 15. I only needed to add a separate symbol for p, and I added it inside the default value. Always remember to add the default value, especially when you don't have a full case. In this situation, we are using only 8 out of 16 possible values. In the end, we connect the outputs with the internal circuit that we described over here. If you want to easily master Verilog for FPGA design and functional verification, I recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. Let's analyze now the Verilog code used for the EasyFPGA finite state machine. We first declare the clock freq parameter that has a value of 15 MHz, and next we declare the module ports. We have one for the clock, one for reset n, a 3 bit output for the O state, and four 7 bit outputs for the 7 segment displays. Here we use some local params to encode the finite state machine states. I use 3 bit binary values to encode the states. You can also use gray codes or one hot if you like. The off state gets a value of 0, and all the other states are created from the previous state and incremented by 1. Next, I declare some parameters that are going to be used to control the custom 7 segment decoder. I have one for the off character and all the others have the same values as I presented earlier inside the decoder. The PCHAR gets a value of 1 that is going to hit the default line inside the decoder, which is this one. After this, I created a parameter that is going to help us count for 1 second. This needs to be equal with the clock frequency minus 1. Now I declare the internal logic used for our circuit. I have a 32-bit counter used to count the seconds, and a clear signal that is going to help us control the counter. Here I declare a wire that is going to tell us that the counter reached a value of 2 seconds. The wire from over here is going to tell us that the counter reached a value of 0 0.5 seconds. You can always use for your state machines two reg variables. One is going to be used inside the sequential process and is going to be synthesized as D flip-flops or a register. And the other one is going to be used inside the combinational logic for the next state. Next, I declare some 4-bit variables used to control the 4-7 segments. These buffers from over here are going to be used to create a pipeline register that is going to isolate the large combinational logic from the next state logic and the combinational logic that is going to be inside the 7 segment decoders. This will help us synthesize our circuit at a larger frequency. Next, I have another shift state counter that is going to be used in the states where I need to count for 0 0.5 seconds. I will first describe the state logic or the state sequencer. This is the easiest part and can be reused in multiple projects. That uses active low reset n, and when the reset is deasserted, then the state buffers the value of the next state. I use the continuous assignment to connect O state with the current value of the state. This will help us see the state transitions on the FPGA board LEDs. Let's describe now the interesting part of this project, which is the next state logic. Many FPGA beginners have problems with their state machines, so please pay extra attention to the description of this module. For our next state logic, we are going to use an always at star combinational process. Whenever one of the signals from the right hand side suffer a change, this process is going to be triggered and executed one more time. Initially, we describe the default value for the next state, which is the off state. 
counter clear, which is the signal used to clear the value of the seconds counter, will have a default value of 0. The 7 segment displays are going to be all off. After this, we use the case statement that has inside it the state variable that comes from the register over here. We exit this state only when count 0, 5 seconds equals 1. Otherwise, we stay in the off state by using the very low code from over here. Let's see the source of this signal. The code for the timer is very simple. We use an always posage clock and use a synchronous reset n. When reset n is 0, then the counter takes the value 0. Otherwise, the counter gets incremented by 1. If counter clear equals 0, then the value of the counter will be 0 one more time. In this way, the state machine controls the exact value of the counter each time a transition occurs. You can see that count 0, 5 seconds is when the counter reaches half a second, and count 2 seconds is 1 when the counter reaches a value of 2 seconds. After we reach the easy state, then we wait for the counter to reach a value of 2 seconds. Until this signal is 1, we are going to stay inside the easy state. So next state equals easy state. When the interval of 2 seconds expires, then we are entering the FPGA state and clear the value of the counter. The FPGA state is similar. Line 114 is going to be used to create the, the easy pattern on the 7 segment displays. So whenever we are in this state, this line is going to help us show the pattern on the 7 segment displays. The FPGA state is similar with the easy state. We stay in it for 2 seconds and display the FPGA pattern on the 7 segment displays. When we exit the state, we clear the counter and go into the easy shift state. Inside the easy shift state, we are going to use the 0, 0.5 second signal to create all the shifting patterns. Since we have four patterns that are going to be displayed after 0, 0.5 seconds, I'm going to use a 2-bit counter. After each half a second, this counter is going to get incremented. This is done over here. When we are in this state, the case statement from over here is going to be used to control the outputs on the 7 segment displays. So in the first state, depending on the shift state counter, I'm going to display off, 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 and E, next off, off, and E, A, off, E, A, S, and in the last state, E, A, S, Y. Next, when the shift state counter reaches the value of 3, we are going into the FPGA shift state. The FPGA shift state is similar with the previous one, only it displays a different pattern, which is F, FP, FPG, and in the end FPGA. After this state expires, we are going to enter the off state again and restart the state machine behavior. The sole signal that I didn't describe until now is the shift state counter enable. This signal over here is going to help us increment the shift state counter by 1. So the counter is incremented if the state is in the FPGA shift state or in the easy shift state and only if counter clear equals 1. Next I created a pipeline stage used to buffer the values coming from the output of the state machine. By doing this, I limited the size of the large combinational cloud from this circuit over here. These 4-bit registers are next fed inside the 7-segment displays from over here. And this is it. This is how you can use a state machine to display a custom pattern on your 7-segment displays. Let's analyze now the test bench for the EasyFPGA state machine. We first declare the time scale, and then we have the test bench name. First, we declare the test bench variables, which are clock and reset n, and next we declare the test bench variables. Clock and reset n have the reg type because they are used to be connected with the input ports of the EasyFPGA state machine. The outputs are connected using wire type variables. These comments over here are from a previous project from the digital BCD timer.
so we only need these ones. Next we declare the clock half period, which is 10 nanoseconds for a 50 MHz clock. Here we instantiate the module and connect it with the testbench variables, and here we create the clock signal. Our test scenario is very simple. We use an initial block, and then we apply the reset, and after this, we wait for O state to reach the value 1 if we want the test bench to check the functionality over several state machine transitions we can wait first for O state to become 1 and next for O state to become 0 again so we will have transitions from 0 to 1 to 3 to 4 and to 0 again we use a repeat block to see the state machine behavior for 4 times Next we reset the state machine and repeat the same scenario but only for 3 times now. Let's create now a model sim project and simulate the easy FPGA state machine. Let's open model sim. We change the directory. File new project. We type here project. Add existing file, browse, go one level up, select all the files, OK, close. Right click, compile, compile all. OK, we compile the file successfully. Now simulate, start simulation. And we simulate the test bench. These are the variables from the test bench that are connected with the top level module. And here we have all the internal variables of the state machine. Please take your time and analyze them individually. Then we press run all. The simulation is going to take quite a long time because we need to count for several seconds. I added here a small trick that made the simulation run 1000 times faster because the clock 1 nanosecond should be a 10 to the power of 9 instead a 10 to the power of 6. Ok, the simulation ended here. Now that the simulation finished, we can see that under the hood of our state machine many many things have happened during this time. If we look at O state, you can see that we have for half a second the off state, then we have the easy FPGA, easy shift, and FPGA shift state. And then we go again in the off state. And this behavior is repeated periodically. Now, since this project is tested on the FPGA development board, I will leave you to take your time and analyze what happens inside the Verilog code using the simulator. If you like this tutorial and you are interested in an easy path for learning Verilog for FPGA or ASIC design and verification, I gladly recommend you my course Verilog HDL Fundamentals for Digital Design and Verification. You can find the link in the video description. For more tutorials and support, you can join our Facebook community. Your strong Verilog foundation is only one click away.